20 years ago, FAO began using less hazardous methods to control locust infestations while safeguarding human health and the environment. It now promotes the use of biopesticides which target only locusts and grasshoppers and have no negative impact on ecosystems or people residing in the affected areas. This particular type of biopesticide is formulated using the spores of a fungus that is specific to locusts and grasshoppers. When the fungus comes into contact with locusts, it germinates, penetrates the locust through its cuticle and develops inside the locust until it eventually kills the insect, a process which takes between six to ten days. This biopesticide was chosen for its ability to infect and multiply based on many years of laboratory experiments and field trials. The same spraying equipment utilized for conventional pesticides can also be used for biopesticides. The only disadvantage is that this fungus takes several days to kill the locusts and can't therefore be used when a rapid mortality is needed, as might be the case in an emergency scenario. This means biopesticides aren't an appropriate substitute for chemical pesticides during major crises. But despite this, even in a plague, they remain essential because they're the only pesticides that can be used when locusts are in ecologically sensitive areas. There is no need for buffer zones when biopesticides are used. It's easy to use biopesticides. The same spraying techniques and methods and the same equipment that are used for conventional pesticides can also be used for biopesticides. But there are few important steps to be respected. The spores of the fungus that is used to formulate the biopesticide Metherizium acridium are packed in opaque sealed one kilogram bags because of the spores' sensitivity to light. These bags must be kept in cold storage warehouses at temperatures of four degrees Celsius to preserve the virulence of the spores for several years. Temperatures of between 10 degrees and 20 degrees Celsius can also be sufficient, but only if the biopesticides are used within two years. Biopesticides are also sensitive to thermal shocks. This means that when bags are transported to the field, they must be placed in sealed isothermal containers. An electrical supply is needed to preserve the biopesticides at the appropriate temperature, and vehicles must be equipped with isothermal containers. On arrival in the field, the isothermal container must be connected to the local generator to ensure the appropriate temperature is maintained. This means Spore's ability to multiply and infect can be preserved for two to three months in field conditions. When being stored for lengthy periods of time, or if there are any doubts over the preservation of the cold chain, the viability of the spores must be checked before use. On average, one gram is made up of 50 billion spores, and the germination rate is of 90% after 48 hours at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Although this biopesticide has no negative impact on human health, those handling it are advised to use protective gloves and masks to avoid inhaling spores and developing any allergies. For the germination test, a few grams of spores are extracted and mixed with distilled water. Then, a few drops of the resulting suspension is taken and placed in culture. This test must be carried out at least 48 hours before the biopesticide is used. 
The spores that have germinated in the culture are then counted by using a microscope. This is how the germination rate of the suspension is calculated. This test is conducted to determine the precise quantity of biopesticides that will be sprayed. If the germination rate is above 70%, the usual recommended dose of 50 grams per hectare should be used. If the germination rate is between 70 and 40%, 100 grams per hectare should be used to balance the spores deficit. The preparation process must be carried out in a shaded environment because the spores are sensitive to sunlight. Operators are also encouraged to wear masks and gloves as well as protective clothing to avoid staining clothes. The spore powder should be mixed with gas oil before spraying. This helps the spores to stay on the cuticle of the insect. As a general rule, 50 grams of the product are diluted in one litre of gas oil. The main objective is to prepare a homogeneous suspension so that it can be sprayed in ultra-low volume. At first, the necessary quantity of gas oil for the area to be treated is poured in the sprayer tank. Then, the biopesticide bag is opened and some gas oil is poured inside to prevent the spores from spreading into the open air. Any open bag must be used immediately to prevent the spores from being contaminated and losing their virulence. The bag must be shaken vigorously to mix the spores with the gas oil. The resulting mixture is poured into a larger container of gas oil. The same operation is repeated until the bag is fully emptied. The mixture must be stirred with a stick to stop any lumps from forming. This is a crucial step because lumps could clog the filters and the nozzles of the spraying equipment. The next step is to pour the mixture into the sprayer tank containing the required quantity of gas oil. Once this is complete, the right dilution for treatment has been obtained. Finally, Operators are advised to shake the suspension tank to make sure the mixture is fully consistent. The mixture used in aerial control operations is made with a motor pump. Once all the steps are complete, the mixture is ready to be used. From then on, the procedure before and during spraying is similar to that using conventional pesticides. But for aerial operations, it is mandatory to use a 30 to 40 mesh filter. The most frequent issue with biopesticides is the clogging of filters. To avoid that, a specific filter for biopesticides should be used, not the one used for conventional pesticides. Once control operations with biopesticides are complete, the sprayers are rinsed in the same way as they are when chemical pesticides are sprayed. Data collection after treatments follows the same procedure as for conventional pesticides, except for locus mortality evaluation. Biopesticides are slower to take effect, which means that locusts die only a few days after treatment. This time lapse does not allow for an adequate evaluation in the field because locusts could move from the site or be eaten by predators. 
To evaluate the treatment efficiently, around 20 locusts need to be collected from the treated plot and placed in a cage to observe their mortality. After a few days, the dead locusts are removed and placed in a moistened box to encourage sporulation. In the initial stages, as the fungus develops, it will give the locust a pink-coloured tint and then it will cover its body with mycelium. This allows operators to verify that the mortality has been effectively caused by the biopesticide. There is no doubt that biopesticides are efficient. Some people are reluctant because the product needs time to kill the targeted locust populations. However, this does not put into question its efficiency nor its use, considering that it means locust infestations can be controlled with no negative impact on either human health or the environment.